Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson, and this is another video on so-called meta optimization, where we want to find the best parameters for a heuristic optimizer, such as differential evolution, which we will use here, or it could also be particle swarm optimization or a genetic algorithm. There's very little interest in these videos that I have made on meta optimization, but that is actually really strange because every single day, probably more than 50 papers get published one way or another that use genetic algorithms or particle swarm optimization or differential evolution or another similar optimization method that could benefit from meta optimization. So what we're going to focus on here is how to tune an optimizer's parameters using many benchmark problems. Now, we could have used so-called Bayesian meta optimization from the first paper with multiple problems simply by taking the sum of the meta fitness that we calculate for those different problems and then forming an aggregate meta fitness that must be meta optimized. That was how I did it in my PhD work and it worked reasonably well. The advantage is that it is very simple and it also allows us to do various programming tricks so that we can speed up the computation. But the disadvantage is that different problems may have radically different fitness ranges, and this may cause them to interfere when we sum their fitness values into the aggregate meter fitness. Another way of using many benchmark problems for the meta optimization is to use a multi-objective or a many-objective meta optimizer. And we use that in the second paper, but we had multiple objectives for a single problem where we wanted to tune the parameters for short optimization runs versus long optimization runs, and then balance between those two conflicting objectives. Now, what we will do here is we will use a multi-objective optimizer, but with several different benchmark problems instead. The implementation is almost exactly the same as in the second paper, with just minor modifications. So this is a flowchart, and it doesn't fit on a screen, so I'll have to scroll a bit. But the idea is that we have the NSGA2 multi-objective optimization method, and it generates some candidate hyperparameters for the differential evolution optimizer, or this could be a genetic algorithm or particle swarm optimization instead. We just use differential evolution in this example here. Then we create a new instance of this optimizer using these parameters that the meta optimizer has generated up here. So now we use this optimizer with those parameters on the first problem and we perform, for example, 32 optimization runs in parallel. And then we calculate the mean fitness values that we obtained after, for example, 10,000 steps. And we do this for multiple problems. I have used five problems in this example here. So we get five floating point numbers out, the averages for all of those optimization runs on the different problems. And then we have a vector with five numbers and we input that back up into the NSGA2 optimizer. There really should be five arrows here, one for each of the problems, of course. And then the NSGA2 creates new parameters for our optimizer and we try them and we feed the resulting meta fitness back into the NSGA2. And this loop repeats until we have hopefully found a list of parameters for differential evolution that work well on these five different problems. We will be using benchmark problems from the CEC 2014 competition, and these are the names. And I have just used the first five, but you can experiment using other problems. So we define the list of problem IDs that we want to use here, and we use a dimensionality of 10 for each of those problems. And we want each optimization run to have 10,000 fitness evaluations. And then we perform 32 of those runs. And then we take the average of the best fitness values that we obtained in these runs. And that is the meta fitness value for that problem. So differential evolution has four parameters. It has the population size. It has a parameter named F, which I believe is the differential weight and the parameter CR, which I believe is crossover probability and then a variant. And as we did in the previous videos, we need to set up some parameter boundaries so that our meta optimizer knows in which area to search for those parameters. And here we have a list of the DE variants that are available, and these will be switched as if it was any other parameter. Now, all of this code for actually running all of this is almost the same as in the previous video. I can't remember how much of it I explained. It's been a while, but it's all very well documented. So I think I'm just going to skip most of this. Maybe I should say a few words about this function here. This function is responsible for taking in the DE parameters, creating a new optimizer instance, 
and running it on all of the benchmark problems and then creating the vector with five floating point values for the meter fitness values. Now, what I want to mention here is the decorator that we have here because the NSGA2 optimizer has a tendency to call the meter fitness function with parameters that are very, very similar. They are very close to each other. And what we do is that we round those parameters because we are not interested in, for example, five digits or whatever. And so we would essentially call this meter fitness many times with the exact same parameters and this decorator basically just caches the results and if we have already called this function with a given set of parameters then we just return the value that we calculated first time so we don't have to run it all again and this actually saves something like 80 percent of the computation time from just adding this little decorator line i have a suggestion for an exercise where you can maybe improve on this cache and you can try that if you like and we are using the pigmo library and we just need to glue everything together and it needs a few wrapper classes to get that done and finally we have the function here for actually doing the meta optimization and this is what it looks like so if the nhga2 has a population size of 40 and we want to evolve that for 100 generations and then we use those five benchmark problems in 10 dimensions and for 10,000 fitness evaluations each and 32 runs so with all of these settings on my quad core laptop pc this took about one hour to run you might also want to try this for more problems and for higher dimensionalities and longer runs and so on and then it might actually take several days to run this so when that is done we can inspect the best parameters that we have found and first we show all the meter fitness values so this is a little cryptic when you look at it first now each row in this matrix has five numbers these are the five meter fitness values, one for each of the problems. So this corresponds to a set of DE parameters. And then we have the meter fitness or the performance using those parameters with differential evolution on the first problem and on the second problem, on the third problem, on the fourth problem and on the fifth problem. Now the second row here is for the second best choice of parameters with regard to the first problem. Notice that the first column out here is sorted ascendingly. So let's scroll down a bit and see the actual parameters for the differential evolution. So these are the parameters that perform the best on the first benchmark problem. So it was a population size of 51. And I think this was the F parameter, which was supposed to be 1.0. And the best CR parameter was 0.52. And the best DE variant was number four. So these parameters were the ones that performed best on the first benchmark problem. And the second row are the DE parameters that performed second best on the first benchmark problem. And you notice that these parameters are exactly the same, except for the population size, which is 54. Now we are trying to tune the DE parameters to perform well on five different benchmark problems. So we have five different objectives that we are trying to optimize. And I tried plotting the so-called Pareto front, but it didn't work very well. And you can try and copy the source code from the previous talk and do that yourself if you like. Now, it might be because that some of these objectives are actually not in conflict. It turns out that when we tune for some benchmark problems, the performance translates to other benchmark problems. But not always. Sometimes the performance is in conflict. So let's try and make a few plots where we compare the performance of differential evolution on those different benchmark problems. And this is not supported very well in Pigmo, so we need several helper functions for this, but I'm not going to go through those here. They basically just perform a number of optimization runs using some parameters and then create some fitness traces using the average of multiple runs. And the result looks like this. So the problem we are considering here is F1, also called the elliptic function. And so each of these lines here shows the average over 50 optimization runs given some choice of DE parameters. So for the blue line, we have the DE parameters that are tuned for this particular problem. And as you can see, those are the ones that perform the best. All of these are minimization problems. And the other four lines here show the performance for DE parameters that were tuned for some of the other problems. So for example, the green line here, the DE parameters were tuned for the F3 discourse function. And the red line here was using DE parameters that were tuned for the Rosenbach function. 
So it looks like on this elliptic problem that the parameters specifically tuned for this problem performed significantly better than DE parameters tuned for the four other problems. Now let's look at the next problem. So this is problem number F2, also called the bent cigar. And here we see that the blue line performs worst. So these are the DE parameters that were tuned for the elliptic function. But it's hard to see any difference for the other four lines when we go out to the end of the optimization runs. But earlier in the optimization runs, the yellow line is better. Remember that lower is better here because we're doing minimization. And the yellow line was specifically tuned for this F2 bent cigar function. So now let's look at this problem here. So this is for the Rosenbach problem. And here it's very hard to see any difference at all. Out here at the 10,000 iteration mark, they all seem to have more or less the same performance. And remember that this is the mark that they have been meter optimized for. How well did they perform after 10,000 iterations on the problem? And in this case, it looks like it doesn't matter which problem the parameters were tuned for. It all translates to good performance on the Rosenbach problem. That's quite interesting. That might change if you change the dimensionality of the problem or how many iterations that you allow. Now here we see something that is a little unusual because this is for the Ackley problem and the yellow line is best, but the yellow line represents the DE parameters that were tuned for the Ben Cigar problem. And the line that were tuned for this problem is this purple one up here, which was one of the worst. But what is the scale here actually? We don't know because it hasn't shown us. So I suspect that these differences are actually very, very small. And maybe if you run this another 50 times, this looks slightly different. And let's go back up and look at the best meter fitness values that we actually found. So the fifth column out here are the meter fitness values on the Ackley problem for all of the best parameters that we found during meter optimization. And you will note that they are all roughly about 5.2 with an exponent of 2. So this means 520 roughly. And because of the way these problems are set up, problem number one has a minimum fitness of 100. Problem number two has a minimum fitness of 200 and so on. So the fifth problem, which is Ackley, has a minimum fitness of 500. And this one and this one here is 520, 521, 520 again and so on. And let's try and scroll down a little and we see that all of these meta fitness values out here in the fifth column are roughly 520. So it means that all of these parameters that we have found perform roughly the same on Ackley. And any change that we're going to see is going to be stochastic variance. So if we scroll back down to the plot, the differences that you see here is probably just a tiny bit of noise really. Now what these plots have shown us is that some of the parameters, they perform well on other problems that they were not specifically tuned for. So of course, when you do meta optimization on multiple problems, you would like to have problems that are very different. There's no point in wasting the computation time on two or three or four problems if you could just tune the parameters for one of those problems. But that's something you will have to experiment with and see which problems have a correlated performance and which ones do not. And this might also change for the problem settings, like the number of iterations and the dimensionality. And more importantly, perhaps, is that it might be very different for different kinds of optimizers. There's a lot of things that you could experiment with and conduct a lot of research into this area. Now, when you make a new optimizer and you want to publish a paper or you want to participate in a competition or you want to make a new software library that others want to use, you need to provide one good default choice of parameters that has a good chance of performing well on new and unseen problems. Now we had 40 choices of parameters above and how can we make a compromise? Well, there are several ways of doing that. And a fairly simple way is to rank all of the parameters with regard to their performance on the five different problems. And then we sum those ranks and the parameters that had the lowest rank performed the best on most problems. And that is our compromise. And the parameters look like this. So it's a population size of 54, a crossover probability of 0.91, a differential weight of 0.51, and the fourth variant, which is named best slash two slash exp, whatever that means.
So let us try and run differential evolution using these parameters on the five different problems. And we see that indeed it was a good compromise because it was apparently able to optimize all five problems using these parameters. But of course it should be mentioned that there are parameters that will perform better on individual problems, but the cost of that is worse performance on other problems. So this is a good compromise. Now to do this in practice, you might also want to do this for different optimization lengths. So not just for 10,000 iterations, but maybe for 100,000 or maybe even a million. And you will maybe also do it for more problems for a higher dimensionality. And you might make a hundred different objectives instead of just five here. So different problems, different run lengths, different dimensionalities and various combinations of all of these. One problem with that is that the NSGA2, which we are using as the meta optimizer, is only intended for what is called multi-objective optimization, which means maximum three or maybe four objectives. If you go over that, there starts to be a lot of problems and the method might not be able to handle it. There is a method called NSGA3 and various other so-called many objective optimizers, which can handle four, five, or even more objectives, but those are not available in the PICMO library I used here. So you have to go out and find those implementations or make one yourself. But for these five problems, it worked fine. And you can try it with 10 problems and see if that works as well. I have made a list of exercises and research ideas because there's a lot of research you could do in this area. And as usual, you can download all of this by clicking on the link below the video.